Like a child's dream of becoming an astronaut, Brazil had its own ambitions. A dream, an objective, a mission, going to space. From the quiet coastline of Maranhão, the Alcântara Launch Center stood as the country's gateway to the stars. Just two degrees south of the equator, it was one of the most strategic placed launch sites on the planet, promising cheaper, faster, and more efficient routes into orbit. With its own rocket built entirely by Brazilian hands, the nation was on the verge of joining an exclusive club the handful of countries capable of putting satellites into space without foreign help. O senhor Jânio viajou grande comitiva onde pontificavam altos expoentes da política nacional. But the story of Brazil's space ambitions began long before Alcântara. In the year of 1961, at the height of the Cold War, President Jânio Quadros established the Grupo de Organização da Comissão Nacional de Atividades Espaciais, GOCNAE, the Organization Group for the National Commission of Space Activities, led by scientist Fernando de Mendonça and operating under the Ministry of Aeronautics. GOCNAE began modestly, launching sounding rockets, collecting meteorological data, and collaborating with foreign agencies. Yet, even in its earliest days, the program was as much about sovereignty as science. Brazil wanted to control its own skies. In the 1970s, the program matured into the Instituto Nacional de Pesquisas Espaciais, INPE, and the Instituto de Aeronáutica e Espaço, IAE. By the 1980s, Brazil's ambitions had sharpened. It would no longer be enough to simply study space. Brazil would build a launch vehicle capable of placing satellites into orbit without foreign assistance. The Veículo Lançador de Satélites, the VLS, our beloved. It was conceived a four-stage solid fuel rocket that, if successful, would place Brazil among the small circle of nations with independent launch capabilities. The challenges were immense. Rocket technology was tightly guarded. Early tests were costly and public. In 1997, the first VLS launch ended in failure, when the rocket veered, of course. In 1999, another attempt was destroyed mid-flight. Each failure slowed the program, but the engineers and the scientists preserved. By the early 2000s, the pieces were finally coming together. Refined after years of trial and error, Alcantara's infrastructure had been improved. Its launch pad prepared for a mission that would prove Brazil could reach space on its own. A successful launch would mean entry into a lucrative commercial satellite market and international prestige. For the teams on the ground, the countdown to history had begun. The VLS rocket was ready. August 22nd, 2003. This day was supposed to be just another day of final checks. 21 engineers, scientists and technicians, many of them considered the most experiences in Brazil's aerospace sector. They were inside the launch tower, inspecting systems and preparing for the historical launch. So much sacrifice, blood and sweat was put into this project. 
and in just three days, all those efforts would be proven valuable. As imagens foram registradas pelo circuito interno de TV da base de lançamento de Alcântara. Cada estágio do terceiro protótipo do veículo lançador de satélites era monitorado por uma câmera, quatro no total, identificadas pelos números que você vê nos quatro campos da tela. Os estágios e as câmeras correspondem a cada andar do foguete, que está verticalmente acomodado na estrutura de lançamento. No alto, o horário local em Alcântara, 13 horas, 6 minutos e 59 segundos. Na câmera que monitora o terceiro estágio, pode-se até identificar uma escada. E o objeto amarelo que você vê no canto direito, abaixo na tela, correspondendo à câmera e ao estágio de número 4, é o satélite que seria lançado. Algo acontece exatamente às 13 horas e 26 minutos, quando as câmeras começam a vibrar. Seis segundos depois, a câmera que monitora o segundo estágio mostra chamas, vindas do pavimento logo abaixo, onde estavam os motores principais na base do foguete. Em um segundo estavam destruídas as câmeras do primeiro e segundo estágios. Nesse momento ainda funciona a câmera do terceiro estágio, que também mostra as chamas vindas de baixo. Um segundo depois, a câmera já não funciona. A câmera do quarto estágio ainda sobrevive mais quatro segundos, mostrando a fumaça chegando ao topo do foguete. O restante só ficou registrado pela câmera número 6, postada na cabeceira da pista que leva à torre de lançamento. Ela registrou a violência das chamas, alimentadas por quase 40 toneladas de combustível sólido, além de vários materiais químicos de alta combustão. Em menos de 10 minutos, o fogo havia consumido tudo. Restaram destroços retorcidos. The morning passed uneventful, the Atlantic sunlight glinting over the rocket's white and gray body. At 1.30 p.m., without warning, the dream was engulfed in fire. A violent explosion tore through the tower, triggered by a sudden ignition of one of the rocket's solid fuel boosters. The blast was immediate and catastrophic. Flames consumed the structure within seconds, leaving nothing but twisted metal and smoke rising into the tropical sky. All 21 personnel inside were killed instantly. It was the deadliest disaster in the history of Brazil's space program, and it struck at the very heart of the nation's technological aspirations. The investigation that followed was swift in its official conclusion. Most likely, an electrical fault had triggered the booster ignition. It was ruled a tragic accident, but questions persisted. Why had the safety system mechanisms failed? Why had the ignition system activated when no launch sequence was underway? And why did certain internal technical reports never reach the public? Speculation grew, and hey, don't get me wrong, we're not trying to be crazy here. Our country's location made it one of the most valuable launch sites on Earth. A potential rival to Cape Canaveral, Bancourt, and Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. Brazil was on the verge of competing in a billion-dollar satellite launch market dominated by a few powerful nations. For some reason, the timing was too suspicious to ignore. While no proof of sabotage has ever been presented, the combination of unanswered questions and strategic stakes ensured the rumor never fully disappeared. The impact of the disaster was immediate and devastating. The VLS project was delayed for nearly a decade. 
the loss of the rocket was significant, but the loss of human expertise was incalculable. The 21 men killed in the explosion carried decades of accumulated knowledge, a human library of Brazil's space experiment. With them gone, progress slowed to a crawl. Yet, the dream did not die. Today, the Alcantara Launch Center remains active, hosting new projects and partnerships with international agencies, of course. A new generation of scientists and engineering are trying to take up the challenge, determined to see Brazil become a player in space once again. The truth, like the stars themselves, remain just out of reach. <laughs>